and say good morning to you on the uh, on the West Coast and noon in the mountains and good afternoon to everybody else. All right, we'll let everybody catch up. That way we're not wasting time. So my name is Chris McDonald. Many of you have joined me for some of these uh, race day product reviews um, previously. And uh, today we're gonna be talking about corrals um, and how to set them up and some creative ways to, uh, to use them. Um, both, um, maybe not right now, but in the very near future, um, and then how you can continue using them um, as things begin to normalize. So I'm starting off with a picture of uh, one of my uh, a small small local race here to uh, to Charleston. Um, so for those of you that don't know. Um, Corrals, a, a number of marathons, a number of larger events are already using corrals. Um, for some of you that are coming out of the triathlon side, um, you've been using corrals called waves uh, for you know 20 years um, in the form of uh, age groups or possibly for pool swims, uh, time trial starts. Um, so just to start in, why do we need corrals? Um, so at some point, I don't know when this is going to be, but at some point races will begin returning. Um, and there are more than likely going to be limitations on the number of participants in, um, specific areas. So, uh, wave corral time trial starts, um, are going to be a way, um, that nearly all events are going to have to manage, um, manage, uh, social distancing. So um, this is one way to control congestion. There are plenty of others, um, but this is a tool that um, Run Sign Up has in its toolbox uh, for you to use. Um, and so this is the one that we're gonna specifically be talking about today. Um, it also allows you to expand your race dates um, and apply scheduled times for the virtual events um, using set paths. Um, again, um, for a, if you're, if your event's smaller, if it's 20, 30 people and you've got a three hour window, you might not need to tell people when they need to show up because it's gonna be spread out um, enough. If, if you have a week long for people to run on a specific course and you have 400 people, again, you might not have to worry about this. Um, but if, if you have a shorter window and a larger race population, um, it, it might be um, a good idea to begin thinking about uh, using corrals to uh, to suggest when people are out on course. Um, and here's just a picture of a of a bib um, from the NYC half. And again, it was just to show uh, printing waves um, on the bib to distinguish when people should be starting. So um, another way of managing this is uh, races can have multiple courses and have people sign up for the courses with a cap on registration for each course. Um, and so the, as you can see, this is the, the same area, this little lake right here. Um, and it's essentially the exact same course. It's just one block removed. Um, and so it's completely feasible for, um, for this event, and this is just a, a drawing, this is not like a real event, um, but it's completely feasible for um, for a race on run sign up to set up, you know, like an east course race and a west course race, um, and then have time uh, time corrals within that. So eight o'clock start, eight thirty start, nine o'clock start, nine thirty start, ten o'clock start. Um, and that way, I mean, your footprint is slightly larger, but you're able to get more people on course doing um, whatever they're gonna do. Um, and if it's virtual, obviously people are um, supposed to be managing all of their, uh, you know, stopping at stop signs, things like that. Um, uh, Jennifer's asking if there's a tip to get the sound to work. Can, can anybody else sound off that you can hear me in the question box? Making sure I'm not talking to myself right now. Okay, cool. Yes. Thanks, guys. Um, cool. Oh, hey, look, everybody found what the question box was. Um, 
I don't know, Jennifer. I would suggest uh, it, it should just come out straight out like a normal video. Um, there shouldn't be any special tips or tricks to get audio to work. Um, it is being recorded, so if for some reason you are not able, um, let's see. Uh, let's see, Michelle saying she had the same issue. She had to go through her phone for audio. Um, so Jennifer, you might um, you might want to try calling in to get the sound to work. Um, so, yeah, okay, cool. Um, so again, um, you could easily set up multiple courses, and you can even set up you know RaceJoy to um, to manage multiple courses too. Um, so with that being said. Um, why on the run signup side? Why use the corral management? Um, so number one, um, in the instance where you're going to be timing this or you need to have some sort of check-in procedure, um, using our corrals does sync with the race day suite. So again, this during like right now, um, using the um, Using you know race day scoring or race director it might not be something you're doing right now, um, but you you might have a check-in procedure. Um, a number of events are having like they're mailing things out, but then also having a um, for some of the less populated areas um, are having a, a check-in spot where people can actually come and check in, um, and so this would allow people to know what wave they're in um, or what their start time is. Um, you can have this set to an automatically assigned by estimated finish time um, within registration. So you can ask a question again, like we're fast forwarding a bit on some of this to when um, maybe not tomorrow, but three months from now, when in some areas things begin to lift and you're hosting say a marathon or a longer distance event. Um, and you could easily set it so that, um, you, you know, the people that are gonna run faster go first, they clear out of the way, then you have another set. And so um, all, all uh, set automatically by the um, estimated finish time. Um, you can import these as needed by CSV. Um, I know I've used that function quite a bit for, uh, for triathlons. Um, if I wanna use like randomized age groups, um, males versus females, relays, or I have a special question about like novices or Clydesdales or elites, um, so all of that can be imported by CSV, um, and we'll go over that. And then um, you can also monitor the number of athletes in each corral uh, as they register. So there's some corral tools that we'll go over. So where did I go set it up? You're gonna go onto your dashboard under race day tools, corrals, and there's only two things under corrals. There's setup corrals and assigned corrals. So it's pretty easy to find under race day tools, just looking for corrals. So um, this is an example of setting it up by finish time. We'll use this example for, uh, for a couple um, other of our screenshots. Um, this is a real event. And so what they've done with this is, um, They've done seed times based on uh, based on estimated finish time, and um, for the marathon, or for the for the half and the full, they have their estimated finish times. And you can see these are different, but the paces are approximately the same. Obviously, the point of that is all of these folks will be running at approximately the same pace, and so you won't have theoretically you won't have people running over each other. Um, again. This would be in a, a real like live uh, on-site road race. And, um, and so again, this right now might not be as applicable. However, I believe on our, let's see. Wait one sec. And then you have the um, an additional way, and that's limit numbers on a course. So again, we have a corral uh, number, corral one, corral two. We have the corral start time at eight o'clock and nine o'clock. We put no times in at all. 
because we don't care about what your estimated time is. Um, we're just limiting this by um, what time um, uh, what what time you want to start. And we can put a max number of participants. So on that previous slide, um, they were allowing, you know, 700 people in the half that might run at a five to six minute pace and 200 people in the full. Um, and that's because you're probably going to have more half marathoners running very fast than compared to uh, a full. Um, and in this scenario, it's less about um, capturing those, you know, the group of the fastest people and more focusing on limiting the number of people. Now, this um, in theory is just like a request. You're just telling people this is when you, a guideline, um, you can manage this however you'd like, but um, it does help you explain to the, uh, to the registrant or to the athlete what time they should be starting. Um, and I will say that people are cognizant of social distancing and, um, and if you're giving them the reason of these uh, graduated start times based on city regulations or what have you, again, not tomorrow, but in months to come, um, this is something that, um, that you, can, you can put out there and like allow people to sign up for a specific uh, corral. Now, even with a virtual event, you can do the same thing, um, especially for larger virtual events. And, and again, we go back to that have set courses. If, if you were just going to say, go out and run a 5K, then having a, a corral doesn't really make sense because people are just going to go run in their neighborhood. They're going to go, you know, wherever they want to. Um, if you're going to suggest a course for people to do, um, that's likely going to drive some folks to come to that place and run. Um, and so it might be a good idea, again, to, to set times and maximum number of people so it gives them guidelines. So again, you don't have um, a million people showing up to one park or one greenway um, that's normally very uncrowded um, at the same time. So this is just below that last section. Um, if you're wanting to uh, uh, set corral numbers by the estimated finish time, um, you do need to select this box and ask for an estimated finish time during registration. Um, if you're setting this up after the fact, um, like you're just finding it, you already have several hundred people, um, but you already have a custom question for estimated finish time, you can use this migration tool and migrate people by their answers into specific corrals. Um, this corral assignment during registration, um, if you don't have corrals set up, then your, um, then your response is likely sitting on do not assign corrals during registration. Um, if you're using this estimated finish time um, and you want it to automatically set by their response, you would select this right here. And then in the previous, um, you know, select whatever time you plan on starting and just having a max of, you know, 25 per corral, you would select this option. Um, and if you're, if you're enforcing this minimum uh, corral time um, and you're allowing people to select their corral, which you can do both, um, it, it'll stop them from being able to sign up for a corral slower than their estimated finish time. So another cool feature is that this allows, uh, this pushes to the check-in app. Um, we have two different people um my big spender person they they bought some stuff um which is why they're a big spender um so this allows for volunteers to confirm the corral and for triathlons it can be used to clearly define what color cap should be distributed um and by doing that you would just change the name of the corral instead of being number one like this is the corral number one for an event um you would change the event to say corral two hyphen blue cap um and the only reason why I would suggest doing something like this, if you're using um, our corral tool for triathlons, is this is a huge help to volunteers or, or staff, for that matter, um, where they don't have to have a, um, a guide to corral one equals sky blue, corral two equals blue, 
corral four equals red, that kind of thing. It's it's listed um, right here. So it just makes things a little bit easier for your volunteers. And there there's um, there's a corral option to make that visible. So it is not part of the uh, the default settings. So you would need to go in and change your settings to uh, to make sure your corrals uh, display appropriately. So we also have some corral tools. Um, the uh, there's a corral and and so. When you're on the corral setup page, you can see this green button, the corral estimation tool. This is what pops up. And you have two corral tools. One is corral size estimator, and it helps you estimate the size of the corrals. And then there's a time builder, um, and it, it helps you finish the time ranges based on uh, what you what you want, the size you want. Um, so here is the size estimator. So right now, these are the currently assigned corrals. And so you can see in the mini event, there's 136 people that fall into this corral A and 13 that qualify in the, um, for, in the marathon. So if you'll remember, this one was set, I believe to 700 and 200. Um, so I'm not gonna say it's at, like proportional right now, um, but it's going approximately what they would expect. Um, and so they, you get a good idea of how many people are gonna be in each corral. Um, this is again, early in the registration process. So they're not expecting to have tons of people in there. I guess all the really fast people decided to, uh, to register early. And then, So then in below that, um, you also have the estimated event size. And so you can put in the event size um, and it will estimate out how many people are gonna be in each, um, in each corral. So it can help you gauge how many people are going into each one. And then the um, corral time builder, um, actually, this is still on the um, the oh, sorry, the time builder um, goes ahead and tells. Sorry, one of my slides got fouled up. I apologize. Um, this actually breaks down how many people um, without an estimated time in there. So um, they did not uh, select the time builder, um, and I I don't know where that slide went. Something must have gotten pulled off. Uh, the crawl time builder actually allows you to uh, to kind of put in some additional parameters, and um, it will it will kind of baseline how many people will probably fall into each corral um, with these specific times. So it can help you if you need corrals at a certain size. That's a, a really good tool to have. I apologize; those uh, those slides got mixed up. Um, so once we get everything set up, we go into corral assignment. And so you can select to assign corrals by finish time. Um, and you can select the events that you want to assign. Like we talked about, you can upload a CSV. All that CSV has to have is the reg ID and the corral name, and um, it'll help you map those out. Um, you can select a default corral that if people don't choose one or if they don't fall into one, they just drop into one. Um, and you can assign people um, when a corral fills up, um, you know, if it would already be full and you're assigning it after the fact, um, you can assign it by registration date, which is what most people would do. Um, and then the size limits, um, the, the default is ignore, because this is, again, you're assigning corrals after people have already registered, not during registration. Um, race joining corrals. So one of the things, and this is just my super awesome one mile run here, um, but when you're setting up your, um, your timing points within race joy, one thing to note is that there is a selection box here that the course has a wave start. Um, the only time you need to do this, and I think I have this listed out on the next page, um, the only time you need to do this 
is for an actual like road race. So like if you ha if your event is not listed as virtual and you're you're allowing people to start over a long period of time, that so like if it, if it's a run or a run walk or something like that and your your start line is open for 3 hours or 4 hours, then you might need to have this um this selected. If your event is a virtual event, it does not need to uh, to be selected. It does not matter. Um, it is wide open. Uh, Race Joy is assuming that your event is going to be run, you know, on that course whenever someone uh, wants to go run. So it'll start um, when they hit the start button. So again, it, it allows for a longer um, a longer than normal start window. So um, very recently, I think it was um, maybe four days ago, five days ago. Well, I would guess it was the 21st, um, actually, by that URL. Um, Run Sign just posted a blog about starting lane bottlenecks um, with some really, really good data about, um, about start lane widths and bandwidth. And this was from uh, a timer uh, that provided this information and what how he expects to kind of line people up. Again, this is not. Uh, for tomorrow. This is just in the future when uh, events can be held. Um, and um, just in terms of how how they're going to be spaced apart, at size, there's a lot of other data in there. So um, this, uh, this talk will be published. But if you just go to the blog, um, it's a couple days back and you can search for bottleneck and you'll be able to find this, uh, find this blog post. So we have had a couple of questions, so I want to make sure I go through that. So um, yes, yeah, let's see. Uh, and, and I know some of these have been answered uh, directly to you. I just want to make sure everybody sees it. So um, when printing labels for bibs, yes, you can add that. Um, you can add a corral name as well. So um, just by adding a question mark in those fields, um, you do have corral as a dropdown um, in that. As a uh, as an option. Um, what if you want to set a max number of people, but also want to avoid walkers and runners going at the same time? So um, this is Amanda. Amanda, um, all you would need to do is uh, you could easily set an estimated finish time of you know it, let's say it's five k. Um, we would say a runner is going to finish in under forty five minutes. So you would you could do like twelve minutes to forty five minutes. Um, and set that to, or you could set two different events, uh, a run event and a walk event, and have completely separate, um, uh, completely separate corrals for those too, or com completely separate start times. Um, and then you could have separate corrals for the run, separate corrals for the walk. Um, so there's a, a lot of different ways that you can kind of divvy those out. Um, let's see. Uh, Charlie, if people lie about estimates, yes, they do. Um, the best is for swims when you ask people what their 100 meter uh, swim time is and you get answers like 30 seconds um, and then you find out this person was 75 years old. Um, and so um, basically, again, it's an estimate. You, I mean, it's really hard to force this without a whole lot of very, very manual uh, combing through data. So, um, I mean, I think that most people that run do want to have the best experience possible. And they kind of get the idea after a while that, you know, if they go off in the correct wave, um, you know, they're gonna enjoy themselves more because they're gonna be around people approximately the same uh, speed. Um, I'm a Al is asking, am I correct in assuming that virtual races without a suggested course do not require city or county permits? Um, Al, I am not going to say one way or the other on that, um, but let's just say that if someone were to go out and run um, wherever they wanted to go out and run, um, if your city or county or state um, is allowing outdoor exercise, um, then I don't really know how they anyone would see any differently, you know, in regards to whether they're a part of a virtual event or just out for a jog. 
Um, but if you are concerned about um, any of that, I mean, obviously reach out to uh, to your city or county and just double check. But I would make it very clear to them that people can run wherever they want to and they're gonna be doing that anyway. Um, Jim, let's see. Okay, Matt's already, can corrals be assigned dynamically look like bibs? Yes, they can. Um, and let's see, I'm trying to see all other, that might be all the rest of the questions. In case you can't tell, there there's a question area, a uh, question section um, in the bottom right, and um, and you can type in questions there. Uh, let's see. Do you think corrals are needed for virtual events? Um, I I think that if you start getting, I don't think that it's a standard answer. Um, well, so if you if you have a virtual event and you have a set course that you're suggesting people to run and you end up with 5,000 people registering for your virtual event, number one, heck yeah, nice work on your marketing. Uh, number two, yes, I would strongly advise like setting dates and times that people should go out and register again or go out and participate if you're suggesting for them to go out on that course. You can also set more, multiple courses. Even within RaceJoy, you can select multiple courses. Um, and so, um, I, I think that corrals are obviously going to be more needed on the backside of this when we start coming out and, and races are allowed, but only, you know, again, I'm just making things up. 50 people can be on the course at a time or a hundred people can be on the course at a time, but they will allow you to continually run. Maybe your police costs go up, maybe your volunteer donation goes up, um, and maybe your staff cost goes up, but the reality is you're able to um, utilize that course for, for a 5K for like five hours rather than you know 55 minutes, and you're still, still able to run um, with appropriate corralling. Um, you can get like the faster people out in a wave, and then they're done in X amount of time, and then the medium people, and then it just kind of um, progresses along that way. Um, so I, I don't think it's necessary, but you would want to keep an eye on uh, on the number of participants. So uh, yeah, okay, Jim just found the corral edits and advanced settings. So yeah, if, if you do want to allow for dynamic uh, corral assignment, um, you would need to have that. Uh, you, you would need to allow for corral edits um, within the check-in app. Uh, can you set dates for corrals? Um, what you would do there is you would set the date for the corral name so you don't have to call it corral number one you could um you could easily call your corral like saturday 8 a.m and your corral two instead of being named corral two would be um you know saturday at 10 a.m and corral three might be sunday at 8 a.m so um at any point you um it, it's a it's a text field so you can put in there whatever you want and that's why i said for triathlons i add in the swim cap color as well just to make it easier for people let's see i'll be uh, any suggestions for obstacle races that already have separate wave start times um i mean i think this is you could manage those in there because in number of uh, obstacle races that i've been a part of um, in most scenarios, you're allowing people, it's less of when do you think you'd finish? Maybe you have an elite time, like all elites must com must uh, must go underneath, like, uh, or uh, they must start by 10 a.m. because your award ceremony is at noon. Um, and then anybody that starts after 10 a.m. is in the, the just non-competitive waves. Um, and so in those scenarios, you can set up, you know, five minute increments or whatever, and just allow people to register, um, you know, whatever, 10 teams per five minutes or however you normally break it up and, um, and allow them to select what times they want to start. So, um, you, you could easily manage that within the, uh, within the platform. I think we've gotten through most of the questions. Um, 
I will say, um, and and this is just, I'll I'll end up posting a link in uh, you know the uh, race directors hub and event professionals group and timers talk. But um, last weekend I timed um, our virtual run with uh, mats um, and chips and all that. We we had uh, bibs sitting out and people walked up, picked up their own, checked themselves in on a tablet, used hand sanitizer, went out and ran. And we did everything remotely and the start finish line was open for four hours. We had 35 people in my neighborhood do it. Um, we plan to do something similar this weekend just to test some other functions out. Um, and we're hoping to live stream that uh, to Facebook. Um, and so once we get up and running, it will be East Coast time. Sorry for those of you on the West Coast, I'm not gonna start super late just cause it does get warm here. Um, but we'll probably be online for a couple hours um, and uh, I'd be you know, more than happy to, to give you a rundown on what we're doing, um, how we're doing it, how we're keeping people distant um, from each other. Um, I've chatted with, and the reason why we're doing it is um, I just did it for fun last weekend and I had a ton of you reach out um, for more information. And so, um, I mean, I would, we're doing it for, free i mean it's just for our uh for our neighborhood but i, I would love to uh I, I would love to share so that you know if you can do it if, if your city and county ordinances allow something like that to happen um then you know i, I do feel like it's the way that races are going to come back um slowly you know like run whenever you want to over a, a day and a half period and that this race um or this virtual event will be, the, the start finish line will be open from uh, 7 a.m. Saturday morning until noon on Sunday. And we'll be dynamically checking people in, starting people, timing people, registering people all at the same time, um, all with the race day tools that Run Sign Up has provided. And um, it's, it's pretty awesome how everything syncs together. And it's a proof of concept. So if something breaks, um, you know, We'll laugh about it and get it working. Um, so it's just steps in the right direction. So um, and uh, William, yes, we do uh, intend to record it. Um, I will try to save it on our Facebook page um, and share that out. So and then Al asks, does a race joy does race joy allow for a single participant to register for a free virtual event? Um, so yes, they can they can register for two events. Right now, I actually have somebody this weekend that is going to run the five mile, and I, the race I'm doing has we set up four courses: a one mile, a five k, a five mile, and ten k. Um, and they they do have to switch bibs right now, just because with an open start finish line like this. Um, it's really hard for both time equipment and race joy to like understand when you're starting, when you're stopping and like when you're not just like moseying back through. Um, and so we, we've found out last weekend that we needed to limit uh, the bid pickup to when people are actually going to go run, like not doing a, a pre bid pickup because then we would get reads well in advance and the system would put them at a, a 5k of three hours. So again, it's uh, it's just we're working through the kinks here. Uh, Heather, sorry, this question was asked. Uh, we're looking to do a virtual on your own 5K later in the month. Is Corral something that we should utilize, or is better suited for a large formal event? Um, so again, uh, I think that this kind of goes back to. Um, Corrals likely wouldn't be necessary unless you see a huge uptick in your numbers. And um, and uh, it's and you're doing a set course. If it's a virtual on your own, then you don't really need corrals at all because people are just gonna go run whenever they want to. And you would just put, you know, a two week, I would suggest a, you know, a week or a two week window for them to complete that. And um, I would also suggest setting up the enhanced virtual results. There's a couple of webinars on that. Um, uh, how to set that up. I think, uh, I wanna say Matt Avery, um, who's on the call, uh, helped uh, do that webinar. And so, um, 
yeah, you do not need, I, I would suggest not spending the time setting up corrals for a run anywhere event. Uh, was race joy used for the test virtual race? The one that I did, yes, it was. Um, we had race joy set up for all four events with turn by turn uh, directions. Um, yeah, so we provided race joy to all the athletes. And um, I would say use for that uh, was maybe 50, 60%. But we also launched registration for this event like 30 hours before it started. So there wasn't a huge lead time into this. I just put on our, our neighborhood Facebook group, hey, are you interested? And people said yes. And so I put it together. Um, so, and that's with 35 people participating. Um, no problem, Heather. Are there any other? questions i appreciate you guys engaging and asking so many again i i do think if you if you've been timing triathlons for a while this might be you know old hat to you in terms of waves corrals or if you're a timer that's you know put on lots of big events um again it might be something that's old hat but for a number of people um for most people i would say uh corrals are kind of a new thing um just because you know a thousand person event normally you don't you don't need to space people out um but everybody's fairly certain that um when when cities and counties allow uh races to start coming back you know they're not going to be too keen on 10,000 people running down the road at one given time um they will over time like there will be a moment when it comes back but it's going to start back small All right, well, uh, if there's no other questions, I appreciate you guys joining me. And um, yeah, uh, we do have, uh, for those of you that are timers, um, uh, we do have uh, race day scoring training coming up in a couple weeks and an additional uh, race joy training coming up in a couple weeks. Um, so if that is something that you're interested in, um, make sure you, uh, you reach out to either myself or Met Avery or Shelly Harris, and, um, and we can help get you uh, registered for it. All right. Well, you guys have a great rest of your day, and I uh, look forward to hearing from you soon. Take care.